Are you guys ready for a battle between the desktop, the GT62 VR, so the GTX 1070, and the uh, GT73 VR with the GTX 1080 in? Who will win? Let's watch. So, these laptops are expensive, but they're getting closer and closer to desktop performance. I'm pitting the 15 inch and the 17 inch Pascal notebooks against this desktop. Now the desktop costs around about $1,500 now, uh, which is pretty much the same price as the GT62 VR. Uh, the uh, GT73 VR is uh, about three grand, so double the price. So, you know, the question is, you know, it's old debate. I can build a desktop cheaper than, uh, than a comparable notebook, uh, but these notebooks, not only have a display, but they are portable and their performance is pretty good now. So let's have a quick look at the specs. The uh, GT62 VR has a, uh, an i7-6700HQ 4-core hyper-threading processor. It uh, has uh, 16 gigs of DDR4 2400 MHz RAM, 256 gigabyte SSD and a 1 terabyte storage and the uh, GTX 1070 uh, GPU. The desktop was a high-end desktop a year ago, you know. So interesting to see if it can still hold its own. It has an i7-4790K CPU overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz. It has got a GTX 980 Ti with the uh, graphics overclocked by uh, 20% and the memory uh, overclocked by 13%. It's got 16 gigabyte of DDR3 2400 megahertz RAM a 480 gigabyte uh, SATA 3 SSD. And of course the GT73 VR has a uh, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM. It's got the uh, overclockable i7-6820HK, which I've got overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz, uh, 512 gigabyte SSD, and a GTX uh, 1080 uh, graphics card in it. The tests I did, I did a few gaming tests and also some CPU uh, centric tests to, to balance it out. So let's see how it got on. Let's take a look at Cinebench R15 first, the CPU test and then OpenGL. So as expected, the desktop soared to a 11% lead over the uh, GT73 and a 55% lead over the uh, GT62. So that's three points to the desktop, two for the GT73 and one for the six GT62. So in the OpenGL test, again, the desktop ran away with it. 28% ahead of the uh, GT73 VR and 75% ahead of the GT62 VR. It's looking hard to peg back that to overclocked desktop CPU, but the uh, overclocked i7-6820 is making a fight for it, so not too bad. Now for me, handbrake test encoding a four gigabyte video file. No surprise, desktop plowed through it in 34 minutes. And second, the GT73 3740. And bringing up the rear, the GT62, 48 minutes, 2 seconds. Looks like the desktop's running away with this one, or is it? Let's look at Passmark and gaming. Passmark measures system performance, graphics, CPU, hard drive, memory. So it's a good test. Let's take a look. <laughs> The 
gt 6480 Nice win for the GT73! The slower processor is causing the GT62 to fall behind, but the gap is closing between the desktop and the GT73. Game on! So, looking at the uh, TimeSpy benchmark, the uh, GT73 VR won handily at 7044 points. Second place goes to the GT62 VR, so it pulls a point back. Last is the desktop, so it's tied at the top. So, looking at Firestrike, the combination of a fast CPU and a killer GPU make it steam ahead. But look how close the desktop is to the GT62 VR. Only a couple of hundred points. Really, that should be a draw. But it's two points to the desktop, one point to the 62 VR, and three to the GT73 VR. Still close at the top, the GT73 VR by winning by one point. PC Mark 8 is a good test of a computer's performance. In the creative benchmark, it includes video editing, photo editing, web work, media transcoding, and gaming. A combination of a fast CPU and GPU is a killer combination, bringing the GT73 VR to 18 points. The desktop clinches second place and then actually not far behind the GT62 VR gets uh, one point. So looking at Rainbow Six Siege, the uh, GT73 VR beat the desktop at 1920 by 1080 by 30%, upping the resolution to 3440 by 1440, beat it by 20%. Looking at the GT62 VR, it uh, beats the desktop by 5% at 1080p, up in the resolution to 3440 by 1440, beats it by 3% as the graphics gets more demanding. That's two wins for the GT73 VR, six points brings it up to 24 points. Two second places or four points for the GT62 VR, ups it to 12 points, and the desktop starting to lose ground at 17 points. Looking at Rise of the Tomb Raider, the GT73 VR beat the desktop by a whopping 38% at 1080p and a 31% at 3440x1440p. 1440p. The GTX 1070 in the 62 VR beat the uh, 980 Ti by 14% at 1080p and 7% at 3440x1440. This does suggest to me that the mobile Skylight processors struggle to feed the GPUs at this higher resolution. So, there's no stopping the GT73 VR, 6 points takes it at 30 points. The GT62 VR closes the gap again on the desktop with 4 points taking it up to 16 and the desktop at 19 points. Grand Theft Auto 5 is a very CPU intensive game and you can tell here the GT73 VR only beats the desktop by 14% both at the 1080p and the 3440 x 1440 resolution. The i7-6700HQ in the uh, GT62 VR was struggling at the 1080p, getting beaten by 15% by the desktop. Increasing the resolution decreases the uh, deficit to uh, 5%. Looking at the standings, there's no holding back the GT73 VR, so it's just a question who's going to get second. The desktop is at 23 points and the GT62 VR at 18. And our final test, Metro Last Light. The GT73 VR beat the desktop by around 19-20% in both resolutions to gain 6 points. There wasn't much to choose between the desktop and the GT62 VR. At 3440x1440 uh, they were the same. Dropping down to 1080p, only 5% separated them. So that's uh, 4 points for the desktop and 3 for the GT62 VR. Let's have a look at the final table. As expected, the GT73 VR with its GTX 1080 graphics and uh, overclockable CPU takes the glory and wins the contest. But most interesting is the battle between the desktop and the GTX 1070 laptop. The CPU does hold the laptop back and the graphics card is very close in the game. So I think that's an admirable performance by the notebook. So what do you think of the results there? Certainly the GT73 VR with the GTX 1080 and the overclockable CPU is a beast. Uh, powered through and annihilated all of this, which it should do. For double the price, it should do. Uh, great computer, the, 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 the CPU performed slightly slower than the CPU in this. And in some cases, it, you know, it was, it was very close. And the graphics card though, powered through it like nobody's business. The GT62 VR with the GTX 1070 generally beat the 980 Ti overclocked across the board. Uh, I, and bear in mind, I had both these laptops also overclocked on the, the GPU as well. So um, this generally beat it in gaming, unless the uh, game required more CPU horsepower to feed 
the graphics card. Grand Theft Auto 5 being a classic example there. CPU tests, this baby pretty much uh, cleared up there. It uh, won most of those. Uh, so this got a good second place and the 62 VR came in third, but not far away. So I think to conclude, you know, the gap is closing. It is so close now between these two. You know, I think Pops, uh, you never know, with the next uh, refresh after KB Lake, perhaps it may be even closer still. Thanks for watching. If you like my video, please uh, subscribe, thumbs up. And if you uh, want to see the actual reviews on the 62 VR, click here. And if you want to see the, uh, the review on the uh, 73 VR, click here. Thank you. Bye.